Mado kagabi. <laughs> Nakapag-prepare na lang. 1 John chapter 2. Let's all stand up and read verse number 6 until uh, 17. 1 John chapter 2. Uh, let's start in verse number 1. Chapter 2, 1 to 17. Let's read this responsibly. 1 John chapter 2, 1 to 17. Okay. My little children, these things write I unto you that ye see not, and if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also to walk. Ah, five. I'm sorry. But whoso keepeth his word in him, verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. Brethren, I write no new commandment unto you. But an old commandment which ye had from the beginning, the old commandment is the word which ye have heard from the beginning. <clears throat> he that saith he is in the light and hateth his brother is in darkness even until now. But he that hateth his brother is in darkness, and walketh in darkness, and knoweth not whither he goeth, because that darkness hath blinded his eyes. I write unto you, fathers, because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I write unto you, young men, because ye have overcome the wicked one. I I write unto you, little children, because ye have known the Father. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. together and the world passeth away and the lust thereof but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever let's pray our father in heaven Lord thank you this day I pray that you're going to guide us let the Holy Spirit uh, be our teacher this morning I pray Lord that you will uh, uh, give us wisdom give us a receptive heart to understand your word I pray Lord that you will your name will be magnified and be glorified in our study Help us, Lord, to see thy truth from thy word and help us, Lord, to apply this in our life. Thank you so much, Lord, for the opportunity you have given to us to study your word. And uh, uh, we, we praise you and glorify your name. Uh, I pray, Lord, that you will guide me, give words to my mouth, because I, I cannot do this without you. I am uh, relying on your power, Almighty God. Thank you so much, Lord, for everything. All these things I ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, you all may be seated. So we are uh, studying in the book of John and we know the, the, the theme of this book is about fellowship. So that's why the book of John was written to the believer, to, to those who are, uh, have personal relationship with God, who, um, who accepted Jesus Christ and repented of their sin. And in that case, be, uh, we can have fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember what uh, preacher Mon said, uh, preached yesterday that the fellowship was uh, uh, broken because of sin and that's what God wants 
to 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 return to tie again that's why he 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 made a plan of salvation in order for us to have fellowship again with him but the, uh, here in first john it's not only telling that we can have fellowship with god but there are some christian also that they don't uh, they they have a personal relationship with the lord jesus christ but the fellowship is not that close so the lord uh, god, god wants us to have uh, intense fellowship with him so like what we study in ver in chapter 1 we saw how the the source of the fellowship is the lord jesus christ and we can see here the the invitation of fellowship he is inviting us to have fellowship with him we also study the purpose and uh, the requirements of fellowship here in chapter one and then last week we discussed in chapter number two one to verse number one to five about the the hindrance of fellowship the reason why we don't have fellowship uh, our fellowship is not that close with the lord is because of our sin sin is hindrancing our fellowship with god and also we can see also uh, in verse number two chapter two number two the restoration of fellowship only through jesus christ that fellowship can be restored again and we can enjoy that and we can see in verse number three the fruit of the fellowship and also in number verse number four we can see also the test of fellowship how how to test the fellowship by keeping his commandment and walking in the light and also the uh, number verse number five we saw the mark of the true fellowship now as we study as we continue to study verse number six until number 15 i uh i titled this lesson is how to remain in fellowship with god how to remain in fellowship with god that's what we have read in verse number six until 15 now we know that this uh, epistle of john it was written 60 they said 60 a.d so it means at that time uh john is continue in fellowship with the lord jesus christ and we can see based on his uh, epistle how he he grew in love with the lord jesus christ i know at the first time when he uh when jesus christ called john as an apostle he loved him that's why he uh, i if you remember john they called it john the beloved he is always close with the lord jesus christ but but we can see also in in luke chapter 9 there's an account that uh his love is not that uh great for for god because uh I, I, if you remember when uh, when they go to Sam samaritan in samaria and they are not accepted and john and james told the lord jesus christ uh but di mo paulanan niya ng ano ng uh, apoy katulad ng ginawa mo sa Sodom kasi parang uh, naging judge uh, gusto na agad nilang gusto ni agad ni John na i-judge yung mga tao but the Lord Jesus Christ explained to John and James you don't know what you are saying uh, so uh, and then as the years go by and uh, I, we know that I, I, I believe that John really loved the Lord Jesus Christ uh, when he was with him personally but it grew more when the lord jesus christ go back to to heaven and to the father and that's what he he wrote this epistle and telling us what we are going to do in order to remain in fellowship with the lord jesus christ number one how to remain in fellowship with god by abiding in him we need to abide first john is uh in john chapter 2 verse 3 says here let's go back and hereby we don't know that we know him if we keep his commandments we need to keep his commandments only saved person can know god experientially only only the saved person if you are not saved and you don't have personal relationship with the lord jesus christ you cannot know the lord jesus christ we can uh, actually god is telling us you can know me well how can we know the lord jesus christ by abiding in him and we can know him if we keep his commandment keeping his commandment it doesn't mean that we can be saved by keeping his commandment because 
God is not telling that we are saved by good works. He's not telling here that, uh, and hereby we don't know that we that you are saved if you keep His commandments. It says here that hereby we don't know that we know Him. We can know more the Lord Jesus Christ by keeping His commandments. We are already saved. But we can know Him more experientially by keeping His commandments. It doesn't say that you can be saved if you keep His commandments because it will become good works. And we know that there are many groups in the Philippines religion that's their uh, that's what their main teaching if you want to go to heaven you need to do good works and that is the uh, the one of the doctrines of the devil yes. many people are in hell because of that doctrine they keep on doing good works and they don't know because of that good works it sent them to hell because that's not what the Bible is telling us it is not the way. Only Jesus Christ is the way. It is not true good works. And now here, by keeping His commandments, we can have fellowship with Him. We are not saved by good works. That's what in the Bible says, for by grace are you saved through faith. Now, how can we keep His commandments? How can we keep the commandments of God in 1 John chapter 2, verse 6? He that saith, he abideth in him, ought himself also to walk even as he walked we can keep his commandments by abiding in in him abiding in christ bring experiential knowledge about the lord jesus christ and it will maintain our fellowship with him if we abide in him god jesus christ said abide in me and i in you you cannot do wala tayong magagawa if we don't abide in the lord jesus christ we are nothing if we are not in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why uh, I remember preacher Mon yesterday. Uh, uh, kapag uh, tayo yung nag yung nagrelay lang sa ating sariling kakayanan, wala tayong magagawa, wala tayong sinabi. But there are times that we are relying on our power, we are relying on our knowledge, we are relying on our strength, but that's nothing in the sight of God. Only if we will rely on the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, that's the time we can give glory to God and that it is not through our self and maintaining fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ is abiding in him abiding means to stay we need to stay to remain where God wants us to remain San ba tayo pinapa stay ng Panginoon we can see that in the word of God that's why we need to study the word of God we need to read the Bible. We need to listen to scriptural preaching, not only just preaching. Uh, and we can sense that if we have the Holy Spirit in our heart. Remain in fellowship with Him. Remain in good terms with Him as far as our daily walk. And we can do that by obedience, by obeying the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, so, now, if you are saved for a length of time, don't be surprised if you come to a point that you are in awe with God. Sometimes when you are, I don't know, if you, you are uh, amazed by the, how God works in your life, how God works in a mysterious way. Because uh, uh, we don't need to be surprised because that's what God promised to us. He is always uh, with us. Like, Apostle John, when he stayed for, I don't know how, how uh, what is the age of John here? It was said, it was written 60, 80, maybe he's 70 or 80, uh, maybe 80 or 90, 90 years old. And uh, I don't know if you see how John, I, th I think John was, John is the only apostle that died natural, in natural death. So I, that's what I remember. So I don't know. I'm not sure about that. But most of the apostles died in, uh, they hung, they uh, cut the head, they cut the body. So only John. That's why if you want to have a peaceful death, you need to be in love with the Lord. Parang ganun lang, pero wala namang ano masyado yun. Okay, so in abi uh, that's how to remain in fellowship with God by abiding in Him. Number two. Number two in uh, 1 John chapter 2, verse 7. 
Number two, how to remain in fellowship with God? By loving our brethren. By loving our brethren. Brethren, I write no, no new commandment unto you, but an old commandment which he had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which he have heard from the beginning. Now, John is telling us here that we, uh, he is not giving a new commandment, but it was the old commandment was given from the beginning. Now, what is this from the beginning? Now, what is this old commandment John is talking about? It was the old commandment which they have heard from the beginning, not from the beginning of time, but from the beginning of Jesus' ministry here on earth. And we can see that in 1 John chapter 3, verse 11. 1 John 3, 11. It says here, For this is the message, this is the message that ye heard from the beginning, that ye should love one another. This is the message of the Lord Jesus Christ to them. In John, uh, so, I, so, uh, for this is the message that ye heard from the beginning, that ye should love one another. Ito yung message na sinabi ng Panginoon sa kanya mga disciples, love one another. This is the, uh, in John in John 13, open the Bible. In, open your Bible in John 13. Thirteen, verse 34 to 35, it says, Jesus is say, uh, is uh, telling this to his disciples, a new commandment I give. I give unto you that ye love one another. This is the new commandment that Jesus is telling to them. As I have loved you, that ye also love one another. You must love one another. Because of this, if you will love one another, Jesus said, by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples. How can they know that we are his disciples? Disciples of Jesus Christ by loving each other. We need to love We love one another. This is the commandment of Jesus Christ from the beginning of his ministry that we need to love one another. The new commandment is to love one another. We need to love our brother and sister in Christ. You know, only born again believer can love this way because this love come, can come only from God Himself. By our own ability, by our own. Uh, uh, yung kakayanan natin, we cannot love this kind of love. I, I, I didn't say that uh, there is a motherly love, even though you are not uh, a Christian, you love your child, but that's not different because they are not plugged in, they are not connected with the Lord Jesus Christ. This kind of love is different on that love, uh, oh, motherly love, fatherly love, brotherly love. But this love, is the love that comes from God. Only God can give this, the ability to love other believers. The teaching of the world is me first. That's how to love according to the worldly system, the world system. You need to love yourself. There are lots of songs about that. Uh, the greatest love of all, you love yourself. And... Uh, Ano ba yung kanta ni da, 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 Love Yourself? Ano yung kanta yan? Hindi <laughs> ka alam yan. Da, 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 da. Okay, basta, basta spiritual ka, hindi mo alam yung mga ganyan kanta. Eh. <laughs> okay, basta kayo, you love yourself, parang kay Justin Bieber yun. Eh. Parang yun, talagang ang mundo, the world is telling us, telling us that we need to love ourselves first. You know, the Bible said that you don't need to love yourself because in the first place, you really love yourself. We need to love others. And Jesus, and the last is ourself. But it's easy to say, 
but it's hard to do. Sometimes, uh, ang nangyayari sa atin, talagang inuuna natin ang sarili natin. We are unaware that we are uh, uh, loving ourselves, but we are thinking that we love other people. But God is telling us, uh, Jesus said, uh, He gave His life for His friend. So that is uh, the teaching of the world is me first. The world is teaching to love yourself. But the teaching of Jesus is other, others first. In John 2, verse, 1 John 2, 8, it says, Again, a new commandment I write unto you, which things is true in him and in you, because the darkness is past, true light shineth. That's number eight. You know, the, the, the darkness here is our lost state, and it is past because of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are not in darkness anymore. We are in the light. In Ephesians chapter 5, verse 8, For ye were sometimes darkness, but now ye are in light. In the Lord, walk as children of light. So we need to walk as a children of light uh, uh, if we want to, to obey the new commandment of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now in verse, uh, it says here, verse 8 again a new commandment I write unto you which thing is true in him and in you because the darkness is past and the true light now shineth now how come the new commandment is the old commandment how can the old commandment is also the new commandment it is the new it is new in the sense that it never becomes old in application and effect it is the old commandment he gave 60 years ago that ye love one another it's the old commandment, but it's new because it's never grow old. We have a constant responsibility to love each other. Although that's an old commandment, but it is always new every day. We need to love our brother. We need to love God every day. Uh, Preacher Rilson uh, uh, taught us this morning in Sunday school the meaning of Christian. What is Christian? Is that a daily walking with the Lord? Daily walking in in the Lord with fellowship with him that's why we need to constantly love our brother yes we can say uh, we love our brother maybe before but how about now are we still loving our brother are we still loving our sister so that's the question that's what Jesus is telling us that we need to love in the present and in the future we need to love in the present and in the future not only in the past in Romans 13, 8, it says, Owe no man anything but to love one another, for he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. The question is, are we loving our brethren now? Do we love others today? Now, that is the old commandment that is always new in application. In 1 John 15, 9 to 14, let's read the first John, ah, first John, I mean John chapter 15. John 15 Oh dito na lang sa John 15 9 Yeah okay sir As the Father hath loved me so I so have I loved you continue ye in my love The Lord is telling us they need to continue in his love If ye keep my commandments ye shall abide in my love even as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. Now you can see here by keeping his commandments, we need to love each other. And verse 11, These things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, that the man lay down his life for his friend. That's what, this is what I'm telling about, that this love is different. Only, only, a, uh, only God can give us this kind of love to give our life for our friend. That's what the Lord Jesus Christ did to us. And verse 14, Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. So we need to keep his commandments. And if we are keeping his commandments, God said, Jesus Christ said, we are his friends. So we can see here, in order to stay in fellowship, we need to love our brethren. We need to love each other. 
I didn't say that we don't need to love the, uh, the, the, the unbeliever. We need to love them because uh, we want them to, do, to hear the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. But uh, in Galatians, also, uh, I don't know if that in Galatians, we need to love more our brethren, especially in the household of faith. Parang ang pangit makita sa isang Kristiyano na mas mahal niya yung mga kaibigan and believer kaysa sa believer. Are we enjoying our uh, the company of other of our unbeliever friend than our believer friend? So it's uh, that's a question to us. If you are enjoying other people who are not in uh, this uh, in, who are not Christian, it's a big question. Why? Why are you enjoying them? Uh, the Bible says we need to love our brethren. Jesus Christ is teaching his disciples you need to love each other. Because of this, they can see that you are my disciples. This is a proof that we are the disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ if we love each other. No, madaling makita, makikita ng mga tao kapag tayo'y nagmamahalan at tayo'y nagkakaisa, nag gumagawa sa Panginoon na may pag-ibig hindi lamang sa Panginoon kundi sa bawat isa. So, ganun po. If we want to stay in fellowship, we need to abide and we need to love each other. Number three, how to stay in fellowship? Again, number three, by obeying the Lord. If we are walking, uh, verse number nine to eleven. He that saith he is in the light and hateth his brother is in darkness even until now. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light, and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. But he that hateth his brother is in darkness, and walketh in darkness, and knoweth not whither he goeth, because the darkness hath blinded his eyes. Now, if we are walking in sin, we are not walking in fellowship with him, with, the, with God, because God cannot sin. Obedience to God is the acid test of fellowship we can uh, say that we have fellowship with God if we obey his commandment that's why he said he that saith he is in the light if you say that you are a Christian if you are uh, with fellowship with God and you hate your brother he uh, hated his brother is in darkness even until now hindi ka pa ligtas kung sinasabi mong uh, lumalakad ka sa sa uh, sa liwanag pero galit ka sa kapwa mo galit ka sa lalo na sa sa mga kapatiran you are still in darkness until now now the testing of our obedience is loving our brethren are we really loving our brethren so uh, we, there are we know there are many ways how to show our love are we praying for each other i don't know when was the last time you pray each everyone or maybe we are praying in general, Lord, bless our brethren. And we have lots of brethren in the Philippines. We, sometimes we need to be specific so that we can see the needs of our brethren. Because with that, uh, we can have uh, yung, uh, mas lalo ka pang mapapalapit sa iyong kapatid. Kaya nga minsan may time na parang ayaw mo makipag-usap sa kapatid mo, sa iyong, uh, sa kasamahan natin dito. Kasi malamang hindi mo pinapanalangin o pinapanalangin mo na sana maalis na siya. <laughs> Panginoon, alisin niyo na po yan. Balaki dyan sa aking buha. So, hindi po ganun. So, He that loveth his brother abideth in the light. So if you love your brother and sister, it means you are abiding in the light. You are abiding in the Lord Jesus Christ. And there is an occasion of stumbling in him. Now, but he that hated his brothers in darkness, inulit na naman ni John, and walketh in darkness, and knoweth not whither he goeth, because the darkness hath blinded his eyes. It is, uh, we are blinded because of the darkness. People can be so hateful toward another person that they are blind by their hate. They don't even understand it. They were just consumed by it, uh, we sometimes we don't know that uh, because of this hate to our brother, it will consume us. Tayo lang ang nahihirapan. It will. Uh, I don't know if you are enjoying coming to church, coming together with hate, with bitterness in your heart, with other 
with other believer, with other brethren. Di ba mahirap yung may kagalit ka? Pag masalubong mo, maiiba yung aura mo. Hindi mo kakamayan. Iba, iba talaga. Kaya nga, sabi ng Panginoon dito, we need to love each other. The challenge here for obeying God and staying in fellowship is in verse 12. In verse 12, now it says here, I write unto you little children because your sins are forgiven you for His name's sake. Our salvation gives us reason and, mot and motivation to live for the Lord. It is enough because we, we know that we are saved and we have all the reason to live for God. We have the reason to love other people because God saved us. We are, uh, hindi, to, hindi po tayo yung karapat dapat. Pero, inibig tayo ng Panginoon. Our motivation to live for Christ is we are forgiven. We are saved. In Romans 12, 1, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. In 1 John chapter 2, verse 13, again, I write unto you, fathers, because ye have known him, that is from the beginning, I write unto you, young men, because ye have overcome the, the wicked one. I write unto you, little children, because ye have known the Father. And in verse 14, I have written unto you, fathers, because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you, young men, because ye are strong, and the word of God abideth in you, and ye have overcome the wicked one. We can see here the fruit, that this book is written for the believer. Also a warning for the believer. And then uh, it says, it, when, when John is telling about the fathers, about the, the, the young men, he is not excluding the, the ladies. Uh, like what is Little children. The children, it can be boy or girl. It pertains to, to each, every one of us. He addresses it to children, young men and fathers. He doesn't mean that he excluded the women. He talks about the stages of our spiritual life. We, and we know that uh, young, yeah, little children, those who are new babes in Christ. Young men, those who are in the front line of battle. Ito kasi pag young men, talagang full of energy. Di ba? Talagang masigla. Eh, yung mga fathers, ayan na lang yung, uh, yung, yung uh, nag-a-advise. Yung para nasa, yung pag sa gera, yung support. So ayan ang tinutukoy dito ni John. The epistle was written for say people. And look at the phrase in verse 13, Ye have known him, you overcome the wicked one. So it's really about the believer. So we are, we, we, we can be, this is our motivation to, to, to obey, to follow God because we are saved. We are saved by, by, by because of the Lord Jesus Christ. And last, number four, how can we stay in fellowship by not loving the world. In 1 John 2, 15, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world is the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. So ito yung inexplain ni Brother Mon about when the, when the devil uh, yung tinukso Si Eva at Adan, ay si Eva, uh, last of the flesh, last of the eyes, and the pride of life. And, and the world passeth away, and the last thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. We can stay in fellowship with the Lord Jesus by not loving the world. In John, uh, but in John 3.16, the Bible says, For God so loved the world. And here, in John 15, love not the world. Now, if we are not careful interpreting the Bible, we can say, but well, it's a contradiction. It's not a contradiction. The world in first jo in John 3, 16 is about the people. And while in John chapter 2, verse 15 is the system of the world, the worldly system, we, we don't need to love the system of the world, the fashions of the world, the ways of the world, the priorities of the world, the mentality, the worldly mentality, worldly success, worldly achievements, power, fame, and fortune these are the things that God is telling us you don't need to love this because it will pass away 
mawawala yan, di ba? Minsan, ito yung ating binibigyan ng oras, binibigyan ng, uh, ng panahon, inuubos natin ang ating lakas sa ganitong bagay. But it's not uh, what the Lord is telling us. In verse 17, the last phrase said, But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. All these things are nothing. Only those who do the will of God, it will abide forever. Now, in 2 Timothy 4.10, this is an example of loving the world when Demas has forsaken Paul. In 2 Timothy 4.10, for Demas had forsaken me, having loved this present world. He loved the system of the world. Compared to loving the ministry, he changed. That's why it happens. Even though in a, if, you are, uh, if you are a Christian, you can... Uh, you can love the world more than God. That's why God is telling us we need to stay in fellowship with Him. And we can stay in fellowship with Him by not loving the world like this. Demas is an example. And, uh, and I don't know if Demas come back. And there's no account, but I think he, uh, I remember Pastor is preaching about this. That he, probably he, he was restored. And, uh, but it's not alam. So what is a warning to us that we can love the world. But if we are loving the world, we are not in fellowship with God. There must be one thing that will capture your heart, either the world or the word. It must be the Lord Jesus Christ, the word, the living word, or the world system. Hindi mo pwedeng pagsabay ng dalawa. Diba? Kahit nga sa pag-ibig, hindi maganda dalawa-dalawa. Diba? Kailangan isa lang kasi mas maibibigay mo yung best mo. Kung mahal mo mundo, di magpakamundo ka. Diyan ka na, concentrate. Pero kung mahal mo ang Panginoon, mag-concentrate sa Panginoon. So now, uh, let's wrap up this. How to remain in fellowship with God? By abiding in Him. We need to abide in the Lord Jesus Christ. By loving our brethren. By... Uh, obeying the Lord and by not loving the world. Okay, let's pray. Father in heaven, Lord, thank you uh, for this opportunity. We study your word. Thank you so much, Lord, for...